Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted when new content is released. Enjoy the video. Do you think that you can change the circuits in your brain by thinking about it? So I did this experiment <clears throat> a little ways back. They took these people who uh, never played the piano before, and they separated them into four categories, and they said, listen, we're going to scan your brains before you learn this, these, uh, these exercises, and then we're going to scan your brain after. And all you have to do is show up for two hours a day in practice for two weeks, okay, and just follow the instructions. And we're going to hook your brain up to these sophisticated scans, and we're going to see what happens before and after. So they got with these people, and they said, OK, first group, here's the scales, and here's the chords. They're one-handed exercises. Practice them over and over again. Keep playing them. So they played every single day, two hours a day for two weeks. They scanned their brains before. They scanned their brains after. After two weeks, guess what happened? A whole new set of circuits lit up in their brain that never lit up before. That makes sense. You learn something new. Learning is making new connections. Repeating it over and over again is sustaining or maintaining those connections, and that's called memory. So they memorized what they were doing by physically practicing or personalizing what they learned. Make sense? Standard, simple. They took the second group of people and they said, listen, we want you to play two hours a day for two weeks. We're going to scan your brain before and after, but you know what we're going to do? We're not going to tell you how to play anything. You just come and do whatever you want. Play whatever you want. So at the end of two weeks, guess what happened to them? Nothing. You know why? Because they couldn't remember what they had learned the day before. And they couldn't remember what they played the day before, and they, they had no structure. They got no instruction and no knowledge to be able to apply it to make some steady circuits. Took the third group of people, they said, listen, don't even show up. Don't even create your day. <laughs> Same thing. Nothing happens. Last group of people, they said, listen, we want you to come two hours a day for two weeks. We're going to show you these one-handed exercises. But instead of you physically playing the piano, we want you to mentally rehearse over and over again those exercises. And we know you're going to get tired, so we'll nudge you, and we'll keep you awake. But you practice for two hours a day, and you keep repeating those. At the end of two weeks, they rescan their brain, and guess what happened? Same area of the brain lit up as if they were actually playing the scales. Now, you know what that means? They grew new circuits in their brain just by thinking about it just by thinking, just by rehearsing. Now, every time we learn something new, we make new circuits in the brain. If you learn anything new, learning is making a new connection in the brain, new neurological connection. Memory is maintaining or sustaining those connections, keeping them alive. And the only way that we maintain and sustain connections in the brain is by repetition. Repetition allows the neurons to develop a long-term relationship. So these people, every single day, made it the most important thing. They gave up their social engagements. They gave up television. They said, I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to mentally rehearse the greatest ideal of myself every single day. And as long as I keep doing it every day, what's going to happen to those circuits? They're going to light up and become the more sustainable circuits to act as a platform of who they will become in the future. During this process of rehearsal, while they were sitting down rehearsing who they were going to be, just like the piano players, rehearsing over and over again, they had long moments where they lost track of time and space. In other words, they became so involved with what they were doing that when they opened their eyes or they lifted up their eye masks or when they turned the lights on in the room, it was two hours later and it only seemed like five minutes. They were so involved with what they were doing that they lost the feedback of the body, they lost the feedback from the environment, and they lost track of time. And the moment that that happens, geniuses, that's the moment we walk through the door to the quantum field. And that is the moment, by the way, according to neuroscience, that we repattern and rewire the brain. And by the way, guess what part of the brain is the most active when we do that? Frontal lobe, because isn't it true that we're making thought more real than anything else in that moment? And because the frontal lobe is the orchestra leader, it has its connections to the rest of the brain. And what it does is it quiets down the association centers the thinking centers. It quiets down the motor centers. You don't want to move, you get still. It quiets down the emotional centers. And the only thing that's real is the thought. And when we capture that thought in the frontal lobe, when the frontal lobe captures it, as, as we hold that thought there, what happens is the rest of the neurons in the brain will pattern and make circuits to capture that thought and reflect it as a footprint of whatever we're focusing on. 
And when we make new circuits in our brain, by the way, do you think that we'll perceive things that maybe already existed but we never really saw? Do you think that's possible? Do you think that the person who lives practicing being a victim every day gets good at it? Turn that on automatically? Is it natural and second nature? And how will they perceive their world based on how they're wired? So if you made new circuits in your brain, do you think you may process or see things in, in your reality different because now you're wired to see them? Do you accept that? Yeah. So if I put up a picture of a Monet on the screen up here, and I said to you, isn't that a beautiful picture of uh, what Monet painted? You guys would all say, oh yeah, that's beautiful. And then I took the picture down and I said, did you guys know anything about Monet? Do you know that he spent 44 years of his life teaching himself how to see things differently? And he thought that every person was too busy to stop and pay attention to light. And he loved light. He loved the light first thing in the morning. And he loved the light at sunset, at the twilight hour. And he said that the golden light of the twilight hour and the brightness and the opalescent light in the morning actually colored reality. And that he said, if I can capture this in my paintings and make things bright enough and capture light, maybe people will stop and look and see what they never pay attention to. And then he said, you know, the wisteria and the bridge are one and the same. I can't paint them separate. They're the same to me. And as he got older, he developed cataracts. And the cataracts were so thick that when he looked at the light, it diffused the patterns. So he began to more and more paint exactly what he was seeing. And the doctors urged him to have an operation, to do something to help him. And you know what he said? I worked too hard to see this way. Now, if I took that painting and I put it back up on the screen, would you see it differently? Would you agree that because you learned new knowledge and new information, you made new circuits to perceive what was already there, but you never paid attention to? Yeah. Reality is the same way. Now, there's only two ways that we make connections in the brain. Only two ways. The first way we make connections in the brain is from knowledge that we gain, information, philosophy. Every time you learn something semantically new, every time you learn a new bit of information, you made a new connection. Could you create a new experience that's going to produce a new sensory feedback to the brain that's going to have a new emotion? And that new emotion then will help you to remember that experience better? And so can you picture in the quantum field future experiences that you would like to have that have nothing to do with survival, yeah. nothing to do with pain, nothing to do with sexuality, nothing to do with success and power and control, but all those virtues that we secretly hope for, those are the end products of being able to experience something different than survival. But you see, we're so wired for survival that the human being thinks that what's happening out there is more real than what's happening in here. What makes us so unique, geniuses, as human beings, is that when other species are subjected to harsh environmental conditions, right, they have to continuously expose themselves to it over and over again until they start to modify their behavior. And as they start to modify their behavior, after several generations, they may be able to change their genetics and produce a, a way to acclimate or, or change as a result of that environmental stimuli. What's that called? Evolution, right? But that may take thousands of years. Human being doesn't have to do that. Human being, because of the size of the frontal lobe, can change in a year can modify themselves in a week, can become a different person in a day. We can evolve ourselves and become somebody else and not have to go through the long continuum of trial and error. Why not fall in love with an abstraction? Something that you haven't experienced yet. But if you can put all of your mind into that abstraction, don't you think that that abstraction will be your future? Don't you think that's possible? And don't you think you'll wire your brain to be exactly what your future dictates? You see, we can't get anything in our life that we're not first wired for. You can't be wealthy unless you're wired for wealth. So once we're wired for it, implicitly wired, non-declaratively wired, when we've wired it so much that we don't have to think about it anymore, that's the moment we are it. And that's the moment it takes no effort to have the side effect of who we are as a mind show up in our life. I have a friend who's a millionaire. I went to lunch with him. He said, today I lost everything that I owned, past the ketchup. And I looked at him and I pushed the ketchup over there and I, he's talking to me and I said, 
Jerry, aren't, aren't you upset? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you lost everything you, you, know, you owned. He said, what? He said, I am money. I, I'm, I've made it thousands of times. I've made it a hundred times. I'm going to go make it back in two weeks. So the question is, who are we going to rehearse ourselves to be every morning? Can you rehearse in the morning your greatest ideal and activate those circuits? And as you rehearse those ideals for yourself and activate those circuits, won't they be the platform of who you become? <laughs>